Welcome to Herb One.、Uh, good evening, class. Today we are going to talk about herbs that clear heat and resolve toxicity. So, this category of herbs basically aim to clear away heat, purge fire, and resolve toxins. Now, what are the toxins? Where did they come from? The toxins is a result of the heat, the intense heat accumulation stagnant in the same place. And、uh, what happened is that the heat staying in the same place,、uh, remaining in the body, it co- can cause a hot, red, painful, swollen lesion. So normally it involves suppurative, which is oozing. Um, inflammation or infection of the skin or other tissues. So what this is implying is that there's infections. It could be、um, bacterial or、um, uh, viral infection. And some of these herbs can also treat snake bites and different type of tumors and cancers. Today we're going to learn about、uh, seven herbs in this category. And、um, the herbs we're gonna learn, most of them are bitter and pungent and sweet. If you remember that um, bitter um, herbs has、uh, special descending properties, and normally they are cold. And、uh, so this category of herbs, because of the bitterness, and they are normally cold. And some of the herbs is actually sweet. It has a moderating function. Um, it's for pain, okay. Normally, it's for pain, and otherwise,、uh, some of the herbs in this category is also pungent. And if you remember, pungent can, you know, causing what disperse dispersion of the chi. So the chi is, you know, disperse to release some of the wind heat. So some of the herbs here. Um, because of the cold nature, they clear heat and、uh, bitterness. They can descend or they suppress, and they expel out through the anus and、uh, defecation process and to detoxify. Okay, so what are they for in general? This category of herbs in generals are indicated for furunco, carbunco, abscess, erysipelas, macules. Mums, sore throat, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, and heat type of dysentery, snake poisoning, and scald. To use this group of herbs, there were some special treatment considerations that you need to pay attention. So, fire toxins is not just result from、uh, you know wind heat, but it can also come from chi level heat. Blood level heat or nutritive level heat. It can be come from all four level heat. So in case of chi level heat resulting in fire toxins, you will combining herbs that actually clear the chi level heat because this is a root cause of fire toxin. And then in case of blood or nutritive level heat resulting in fire toxins, you do the same thing. The herbs that you use will be combining with the herbs that. Um, clear the blood and nutritive levels, so clear away the root source of heat toxin. And then, well, of course,、uh, some of the herbs in this category can expel exogenous factor. Now, the exogenous factors in this case will be wind heat. So, if the wind heat is leading to fire toxin, then you will need to combine herbs in this category with herbs that actually clear wind heat, so that you clear away the root cause of the fire toxin. There are general signs and symptoms to use for these herbs. As it implies, clear heat resolves toxicity. So, where did the toxins come from?、Uh, in the Western term, the toxins actually come from the infection. That's basically the bacterial or viral infection. Now, when there are microorganism growing, what happens is that they also dump things and they use our resources. As a result, so our white blood cells will try to、uh, defend, right? So the defense、uh, process will create pus. It may create abscesses, sores, and ulcerations. Okay, so the fire toxins basically、um, in the Presence of the fire toxins end up that we can have pus, abscesses, sores, and ulcerations in the body in in various parts of organs or tissues or the muscles. Okay, so 
Now, and uh, this, as I be, as I said before, this category of herb in general can resolve toxins, and they are actually as a result of the stagnant heat, and um, and it can also be you know due to uh, febrile disease that you know that is uh, from the uh, weight level, uh, defensive level, and. Uh, we can also, you know, so this category of herb, herb can actually treat febrile diseases. And as we mentioned that, you know, that, uh, this category of herbs also can treat, uh, chi level heat, clear the chi level heat. So if it is chi level heat, it can all, it can actually happen in the organ level. That means it's the liver, gallbladder, large intestine, stomach, and lung. In case that it is in, um, the chi level heat in the large intestine, the person may have symptoms such as diarrhea, dysentery. Other times it can be happening in the internal organs. I have abscesses. It could be in the uh, in the large intestine, and um, you know, if the abscesses is in the breast, can you become um, mastitis? And sometimes uh, you can have a surface pus, you know, on the exterior, on the skin level, it's like a big boil or burns. So the, this category of herbs can treat burns, pus, wounds, soreness, and swelling of the sore throat. Now, the swelling of the sore throat normally is, can be caused by wind heat, but it also can be caused by heat toxins, a chi level heat, okay? General contraindications. Before we talk about any of the herbs, I just want you to pay attention that uh, because this category of herbs are in general cold, if they are not very cold, some of them are extremely cold. So uh, when it is cold like that, you have to ingest it. It goes through the digestive tract. It can damage the spleen and the stomach. If the person that already have a deficiency cold in the spleen and the stomach, then normally the person, you know, have really weak digestion. So if you give herbs to these patients, then it can result in very severe diarrhea. Okay. How did it happen? Now, can you think of the cold? What happened? When there's cold, there will be congealing, you know, stagnation in the intestinal tract. What happened is that Whatever fluid you ingested in there is not going to be absorbed, and this liquid uh, in your food is not going to be absorbed. So end up that the liquid will expel out through the defecation process, it becoming diarrhea. Now we're going to look at three herbs in the next few slices, and the first herb is called Jingyinghua, a honeysuckle flowers, and the second herb called Nanqiao, Forsythia. And the third herb is Da Qing Ye, uh, Isaitis leaves. Okay, I want to mention that really special in this category of herbs that these three herbs, Jing Ying Hua, Lian Qiao, and Da Qing Ye, they all expel externally contracted wind heat. Okay, so remember that they all these three herbs, not all the herbs, only the first three herbs in your um, in your chart, the table, the summary table that I gave you, only the first three herbs expel the externally contracted wind heat, and so Jing Ying Hua, Lian Qiao, but then Jing Ying Hua and Lian Qiao, um, these two, the first two herbs are special because these two herbs. Can can clear heat from all levels, you know, all four levels. If you remember last week, we talked about Wei Qi Ying Sui. Okay, so that the the first two herbs can clear heat from the protective, from the Qi, from the nutritive, and also from the blood level. Okay. First, we would like to look at the um the first herb, which is the Jing Ying Hua. Um, Jing Ying Hua is a uh, honeysuckle flower. And you may be uh, surprised to see that, you know, it doesn't look like honeysuckle flower. It's because that we harvest the Jing Ying Hua before the flower bloom. Okay. Why is it? Uh, for some reasons that uh, we don't use the bloom, f already bloom flower because that the, you know, when the flower is already open, Jing Ying Hua has honey in it. Okay. It's, su it's quite sweet and it has a really special sweet, sweet bouquet. It attracts 
bugs. If the flower is already open, you may already have insects in there. So we don't want to harvest the insect. And also, some people may be also allergic to、uh, insect, and you can cause、uh, allergic reaction. This is、uh, just for you know special consideration. And besides, seeing why we want to re re we want the entire flower, we use the entire flowers for its properties to treat heat. To clear heat, and、uh, there's some special things inside the flower bulb, so we use it to、uh, clear heat. It's actually for all four level heat, if you remember. So Jinghua is green, greenish color before it actually、uh, starting to bloom. We we cut it off and harvest that. As I mentioned before,、um, in this category of herbs,、uh, all herbs are pretty cold. Jinghua is cold, okay. And I mentioned now that、uh, Jinghua is a flower, okay. And、uh, this flower is quite sweet, so this flower is sweet. You know, has a sweet properties, so it's sweet and cold. As I mentioned, that some of the herbs actually clear exterior wind heat. So normally, exterior wind heat, why, where does it attack? It attack the lung. So Jinghua actually enter the lung,、uh, lung channel. It's also sweetness. It can harmonize the stomach. So you go to the stomach channel and also large intestine. It's cold. Can clear some of the heat in there, and、uh, that is actually used for dysentery and diarrhea. How much do we use Jinghua? We use about ten to thirty grams. Okay, so when a person has just exterior wind heat, then we use a small dose, normally about ten、uh, to fifteen grams. But if the person has a toxic heat, sometimes we'll use larger dose and thirty、uh, grams. And there's formulas that actually call for ninety grams to you know、uh, in the in the dose、uh, for the day. So Jinghua, if it is like for toxic heat, we you normally use between fifteen、uh, minimum of fifteen grams to actually ninety grams. Okay, so、uh, yeah, it's exceeding the normal dosage. Okay, as I mentioned,、uh, Jinghua clear four all four levels heat. The first level it clear is actually the Wei level, which is the protective level.、Uh, we specifically use Jinghua for. A、wind heat, okay. So if you recall, wind heat,、uh, you know, some symptoms for wind heat will be like fever, slight aversion to cold,、um, headache, thirst, sore throat, and、uh, there are more more other symptoms. Okay, you may want to pay attention. If you don't remember what those are the symptoms, you may want to go back and look at the notes, and、uh, yeah, and remember try to memorize that because it's really important for you to continue to learn herbal medicine and also Chinese medicine. And theory. This is the second actions of the Jinghua is to vent heat and to resolve toxins. So resolve toxins in this case is heat toxic toxicity. So as I said, the Jinghua can、uh, clear all four levels heat, and it can clear the warm febrile disease, the Wei level, and actually also the clear、uh, Qi, Ying, and Shui level. What are they for? For the toxins is. Treat sores, abscess, clove sores, and boils. What is the clove sores? Clove sores is a kind of a boil type,、um, you know, infection, and is on the on the skin. On the skin surface, is slightly swollen and slightly red, but it is really deep. So clove in Chinese it means nail. So it is so deep rooted; it's actually embedded inside of into the flesh. It's like a、um, nail, you know,、uh, get into the the you know under the skin, and、um, this kind of soil、uh, source is really toxic as painful. Okay, although it doesn't look、uh, you know very severe from outside, but they are really really deep inside. Okay, and uh, again, Jinghua uh, can disperse wind heat, and it is for initial states of、uh, in initial stage of、uh, warm febrile disease.、Uh, you can use a small dose, fifteen、uh, about ten fifteen grams,、uh, you know, in the decoction. And honeysuckle flower Jinghua can actually clear the blood level heat, and when we say clear blood level heat, we normally use it to cool the blood, the too much heat in the blood, and we use it to check dysentery. And、uh, whatever dysentery,、uh, if it is 
blood level heat, the dysentery is normally come with blood, okay? Blood level heat, the dysentery, the poop, uh, you know, will have prurulent discharge, bloody prurulent discharge, okay? And it's normally uh, toxic, has toxins in there. For that reason, Jing Yinghua can clear um, blood level and yin level and qi level heat. So we can actually use it to treat really common problem, uh, painful swollen throat, okay? Uh, the swollen throat can be due to wind heat or to heat toxins. And uh, we usually combine with other herbs and you will be learning them um, in the next lesson, okay? In the next few lessons. One of the herbs is called Shi Gan and the other one is uh, Ma Bo. Okay, and um, so the key to remember for this um, flower, honeysuckle flower, is that it disperses wind heat, and uh, here it clear heat and uh, resolve heat toxins, and it clear all four level heat. Okay, and uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, there's a herb called Lian Chao that we are going to learn in the next slides next couple of slides and uh, there is a relationship to use between uh, use uh, Jing Yinghua and Lian Chao they are in the same category remember that they're in the same tech category so that they, they have really similar properties okay so combining these two herbs together to use in a formula we call it the mutual accentuation so what is mutual accentuation? If you remember in our course notes last week, a couple of weeks ago, it's basically meaning that you're combining two or more herbs with the same properties. Now, in this case, both herbs actually clear heat, resolve toxins. Okay, this is the properties. And they also cold and, uh, uh, you know, have a cold uh, uh, properties as well, nature. So they combining together they will create a synergistic effect. It's not one, that means it's one plus one is not equal to two anymore. It's equal to a whole lot more. Okay. So the two herbs combining together, they are becoming much stronger. They can enhance the effectiveness of the clear heat resolve toxins, uh, you know, um, actions of the herbal medicines, uh, herbal decoction. So basically mutual accentuation is that they need they are needed for each other it is a mutual necessity so if we use Jing Hua and Nan Chao together we are using it in you know as a pair herb in western medicine medicine term in chinese medicine term we will call it dui yao okay so it's a pair herb uh, using it right okay using it right is a pair and uh, I want to mention one thing about these two herbs using together, okay? Uh, when we use these two herbs together, to, they treat warm free brow disease and they can be used for to treat all four stages of heat, Wei Qi Ying Sui, okay? And um, there is contraindication, of course, uh, you know, for uh, this category of herbs. And, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the general contraindication is spleen stomach deficiency cold. So if the person already has spleen stomach deficiency cold and with diarrhea, you may be, you know, you may not want to use this herb at all. And uh, if you do, uh, you know, that will be combining with a lot of tonifying herbs, uh, warming herb, and uh, to make sure that the person is not going to have further uh, spleen and stomach damages because of the cold nature of this herb. And also that if the person has uh, sores due to qi deficiency, um, that uh, normally if there's a qi deficiency sore, there will be a clear exudate, clear discharge, okay, from that open wound, okay, open area, open sore area. And sometimes we also call it yin ulcers, okay, so it's a, because it is actually on the lower part of the body and it's also cold related, okay. And uh, where, except, as I mentioned, that the lower part of the body, normally where do you find that kind of ulcers or sores? If the person still walking and uh, or maybe on wheelchair, you'll find that uh, the person has uh, that kind of open wound near the ankle. Uh, uh, normally be below the knees area, they will have that kind of sore. If the person is actually bedridden, you'll find that, you know, uh, probably on the buttock area, on the back area, on the back of the leg. The second herb we're going to talk about is called Lian Chao. 
for Cynthia. Okay, I would like you to pay attention to the shape of this herb. It looks like heart shape. And also that you can see this is slightly hollow. And also it's brownish color and reddish color. So what do they mean? I want you to associate all these colors and the shape with what I'm going to talk about about this herb, okay? Now, first of all, this is a clean heat resolve toxins category herb. So this is bitter herb, okay? And uh, slightly acrid and slightly cold, okay? It's not very cold, slightly only. But uh, as I remember, as I as I said, that uh, the shape is resembling a heart. So this category of get this herb, Lentil uh, Facetia, enters the heart channel. And because it can actually treat all four level heat, you know, the, the protective level, the weight level. So it actually enters the lung. And uh, remember that the color of the herb is brownish color and yellow color, okay? So it's related to gallbladder channels. So this land channel actually enters three channels, heart, lung, and gallbladder. For contracted wind heat, for symptoms like fever, uh, aversion to cold, headache, thirst, sore throat, and the tongue normally is uh, red tip, and uh, you know uh, may have a, a thin yellow coating okay really thin yellow coating the pulse is slightly rapid and the person may feel thirsty and uh, may have sweat okay because of heat and lentil uh, it can clear the pc level pc is pericardium okay pericardium level heat it's which is similar to why we say that in yin level heat okay yin level okay so Lentil can clear the warm free bowel disease with high fever. Okay, when they get to yin level or pericardium level, the heat actually get deeper in the body. So when the more the deeper it get to, the higher the fever will become. Okay, so when because that person has higher fever, much higher fever, so it's actually arousing the mind, and the person feel irritable. And, you know, sometimes we say that the, the, the heart is actually our shun, our, our mind. So that person can actually lose consciousness. So we use Lin Chao to, uh, uh, to clear the heat that is in the PC, which is pericardium level or the yin level. Other than that, uh, remember the, the, the herb, the shape is actually dome shape, okay? And so you can imagine it being a boil or abscess or lumps or clumps and a sore on the skin or on the skin layer, or, you know, or in the, uh, in the, in the neck area. So, uh, it is actually good for also for painful swollen throat. And, uh, we also use it for scrofula, phlegm nodules. And goiter, okay. Uh, Nan Chao has a special name in Chinese medicine, and they said that basically it is a superior herb. It's a very superior imperial herb, and that's a great choice to treat heat toxins, leading to various types of sores, carbuncles, gofla, nodules. Basically. It treat the lumps, the clumps, the nose, and scrofula, and goiter, and swollen things. Okay, any, any of those toxic, uh, you know, uh, nodules and and boils. Okay, and also, um, in the Shanghai Lun, uh, our really special, um, ancient Chinese uh, book, that is said that Nan Chao can uh, is an imperial herb, imperial herb that can treat uh, Quan Jia. Chuanjia is a special um, terminology. It is a disease that related to excess heat, and that is uh, from the heart channel. Again, contraindications. The first contraindications is the diarrhea resulting from spleen and deficiency cold. If the person already suffering from diarrhea, loose stool because that person has spleen or stomach deficiency cold, you do not want to use Lin Chao. And the second thing is that, uh, again, if the ulcerated areas has clear exudates, so the ulcerated carbuncle, that person's 
possibly suffer from qi deficiency. Okay, so if that means that if the person has qi deficiency, ulcers, carbon cold sores that has clear exudate, which is the oozing liquid, then you do not want to use lan chao. Okay, and also the cold yin sores, uh, which is related to um, cold and uh, in the yin part of the body, lower part of the body. Now, uh, after Lin Chao, we're going to talk about three herbs. And one herb is called Da Qing Ye, uh, Folium Estitis. The second one is Qing Dai, Indigo. And the third herb is Ban Lan Gen, uh, Excited, um, Excitis, uh, Redis. Okay, I want to tell you that up front, these three herbs all come from the pla same plant, okay? So come from the same plant. Uh, among the, all these three herbs, Da Qing Ye, the leaves of this herb is very, very cold and it is used more for rashes, for skin problems. The first herb we're going to look at is Da Qing Ye, as you can see on the, you know, on the picture. In the picture, the leaves is really dark greenish color, and uh, we use mainly the leaves. And it's really dry, okay? It's really dry herb, and uh, dark color meaning that it's really cold, okay? So this herb, uh, what about it? And this herb is bitter, it's salty, and it's cold. And uh, this herb can enter the it. This herb enters the um, lung, stomach, and the heart channel. What does it use? As I mentioned, it's normally used for skin problems. So it disperses the macules. The macules, which is like um, kind of a lesions, but they look like a spot. Okay, look like the flat, flat color red spot on the skin. And uh, it also can be used to treat swollen throat, painful swollen throat. Okay, anything cold basically can clear heat. If the if the area is has is painful and swollen, he, uh, you know, if it is heat related, you can use the cold herb to treat it. But of course, it has to be in the in the right category. So, and in this case, Daiting Ye can treat painful swollen throat and with dispersing the swelling. Okay, disperse the swelling. So it is good for uh, strong heat, uh, strong heat toxin in the blood, causing erysipelas and sores in the mouth and painful swollen throat. The key to memorize this herb is that you use this herb uh, to treat the warm free bowel disease and uh, erysipelas. We call it. Uh, uh, Dan Du, okay. Remember the name is called Dan Du, and uh, also we call uh, heat toxin erysipelas and also he blood heat um, erysipelas. And also that uh, Da Qing Ye is uh, in as in the clear heat resolve toxin category, so it can clear heat resolve toxin, and it can cool blood for the blood level heat, and eliminate macule. The contraindication for this herb is really simple, basically spleen and stomach deficiency cold. Now we're going to go to the next herb. The next herb is Qing Dai, indigo. Uh, as the name uh, implies, indigo is a color and it's also a dye. So um, in this case, Qing Dai, Qing is mean green, okay? So um, that is actually the pigment of the, of the herb. And, uh, you know, this pigment is not very forgiving, eh? So if it gets to your clothes, it will stain there. And uh, I make a joke uh, our, our last time when I teach this herb, and I actually give it to my patients uh, to as a wash, you know, um, and uh, for bottom for the bottom after they have the um, you know hemorrhoid bleeding hemorrhoid problem to reduce infection, and there's also for bleeding hemorrhoid due to heat. Okay, after they wash the bottom, if they put it into a, a pan, you know, a, a basin, and they sit on it, and after that they will actually dye the bottom, you know, a ring. Okay, just like those uh, animals, you know, like sea and kudus and you know deer they all have a ring on the bottom okay so that uh, it just basically it dye your it dye your bottom you know it dye the skin and it dye your clothes okay if you use it 
um, it's not very forgiving. So when you use this herb, you got to be really careful and instruct the patients, you know, how to handle this herb properly. Ting Dai uh, come from the same plants and so it is still, you know, very salty. Okay, it's a not so, it is salty and it is cold herb. It's a cold herb. And uh, it, the green color and um, it's actually the liver color. So Ting is liver color, which is the green color. Green color and gold like um, uh, is the, the liver color. So we enter the liver. And it's also go to the lung and stomach channel to clear the lung and stomach channel heat. So how much do we use Ting Dai? We're going to use indigo um, powder, normally between 1.5 to 3 grams. Okay, it's very small dose. You do not use a large dose in this uh, using this herb because the large dose can actually is actually toxic. Um, and it's, it's actually not, uh, uh, it's not very safe to use. So we normally use this herb. Um, I use it uh, from time to time and I just uh, put it in a glass of water. And uh, in case that I have sore throat, it actually stops sore throat really quickly. It is used for cool blood and disperse swelling. So it's good for macules due to heat toxin, vomiting blood, nosebleed, mums, but painful swollen swelling and throat obstruction so um, it is good for abscess and sores due to heat toxin we use ting dai indigo to clear heat and drain the uh, clear the liver and drain heat so when there is heat in the liver the person can actually can have convulsion in this case that is what is said child fright wind okay basically is the, the child actually has uh, nighttime crying and uh, convulsive uh, behavior okay uh, uh, sometimes spasms or convulsion okay so that is because of the um, the heat actually invaded in the liver channel and so the person has uh, convulsion and fever okay if they have the uh, extreme heat in the liver so ting dai can be ting dai can be used to clear the liver heat and also it can clear the lung and liver heat and how does it work so when there's too much heat in the lung it can actually invade uh, sorry too much heat in the liver it can invade the lung and ca causing coughing so it can uh, you know so you can use this herb to clear the liver so that it doesn't uh, it stop uh, attacking the lung causing the cough and it also can clear the lung heat that you know causing the cough and when applying to the skin, uh, Ting Dai is actually quite dry and so that you can actually use, uh, you can use either the powder to absorb the exudate and, um, or you can actually mix it with liquid, just water and apply on the skin to uh, cool um, the area down. The general contraindication for this herb is uh, really simple. It's basically stomach cold, uh, actually including also spleen cold. Depends on which book uh, you read. Okay, the next herb is called banangan. We are still using the same plant, but it is a different part of the plant. Okay, banangan. Gan means um, the roots. Okay, banangan is bitter and cold. It enters the heart, lung, and stomach channel. It's just like Ching Dai, Ching Dai as I enter the heart, uh, like a lentil as well, enter the heart level, and uh, lung and stomach. And uh, how much do we use it? It's about 10 to 15 grams, okay? And mainly we use Banangan is for, um, in the old days, is for benefiting the throat, for uh, painful swollen throat. And, um, but banangan, because it can actually, uh, because it go to the heart, so it can cool blood, okay? Um, you can, you can use it for the blood level heat. And, uh, if you remember a few years ago, uh, we have SARS and we have H1N1. And, uh, during those epidemic season, banangan has been used, uh, you know, have been sold out 
um, in China, in a lot of、uh, Asian countries, and also in Canada. And、uh, they were becoming extremely expensive because we use it to prevent epidemic disease, and we also to use it to treat epidemic diseases. And it's extremely effective、uh, during that time,、um, you know, to treat,、uh, you know, H one N one. And、uh, to treat,、uh, you know,、um, you know, the、um, pandemic、um, uh, problem related to viral infection. So, banangan,、uh, because it can,、uh, is is really cooling and the cool blood, so we can actually use it to uh, treat uh, macular, you know, for macular eruption. We use it、uh, for mumps, and、uh, there's one. One disease is called massive head scourge. So, it's basically is a big head syndrome, uh, encephalitis, and we also use it、um, to treat toxic swelling. So, what is the contraindications for this herb? Now, if the person is weak, or the person doesn't have fire poisons, uh, toxins, um. Uh, there's no indications that person has sore throat, or you know,、uh, we don't normally do not use it. We normally do not use this herb. Okay, the next herb we're gonna look at is called Pu Gong Ying. Pu Gong Ying is dandelion. Okay, so dandelion、uh, is bitter and、uh, is sweet and is cold. So the French delicacy, right? So the French people use it to make salad. And it's actually really good cooling herb, and it's really nutritious as well. We use、uh, Pu Gong Ying、uh, because that it actually enter the liver and also ch stomach channel. Just remember, Pu Gong Ying was is used as a food, okay? So it's really digestible. That's that's why that you know,、um, and in general, food items actually、uh, go to the stomach channel. So. Uh, you learn from the last lecture that we have、uh, some of the food that actually go to the stomach channel, like gurgen, right?、Um, you know that、uh, uh, you know it go to stomach, and、um, you、uh, you learn that jisuye and sinjiang, uh, uh, jisuye actually go to spleen and sinjiang actually go to stomach. Okay, basically, when they are food, you can think associate that、uh, food go to the stomach channel. So, because Pu Gong Ying is quite、uh, heavy, it's not really drying herbs. Uh, uh, it is sweet, so it has have some,、uh, you know, sweetness. It's actually heaviness. So, we use normally use a larger dose.、Uh, use about ten to thirty grams. What do you use Pu Gong Ying for?、Um, Pu Gong Ying is actually really famous for abscess, especially to the breast area. So, we use it to treat mastitis. And、uh, to reduce、uh, abscess in the mastitis in the breast area, but Pu Gong Ying because it's actually go to the stomach channel. If you learned、um, from、um, acupuncture, already learned the stomach channel already. The stomach channel actually goes through the breast. Okay, so you have a stomach.、Um, the meridian point is on the nipple. Okay, seventeen and eighteen. You know all this area. You know the stomach channel runs through. It is、uh, you know、um, the breast area. So、um, because Pu Gong Ying is quite nutritious,、eh? uh, you can imagine that this is a really good herb for、uh, breast milk because it go to the stomach channel, right? So it's for poor lactation problem. And、uh, otherwise,、uh, we use it quite commonly to clear、uh, clear the liver because it's enter the liver. And、uh, it's、uh, for eye problems, so for wind heat, for actually sorry, it's for fire toxins. For fire toxins actually causing red eyes, we use Pu Gong Ying,、uh, which is the、um, dandelion leaves. Okay, is the entire plant that we use it basically, and we also use it for、um, uh, treating. Painful urinary dribbling, which is the Lin syndrome, so dysuria in、uh, Western term, dysuria, and、uh, we also use it um, to um, address the damp heat related diarrhea. So the stomach channel,、um, you know, when it's too much heat, the stomach heat, and、uh, heat will go downward and can cause diarrhea. And of course, because it go to the liver channel. 
and it can uh, li clear the liver fire. So that is actually good for damp heat jaundice. Okay, so it's for jaundice problem. The 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 bile because of the heat, uh, in the gallbladder and got uh, push out and it's just basically boiling, boiling, boiling and uh, ooze out. So the key to remember Pu Gong Ying dandelion is to that um, it clear heat, resolve toxin, it actually promote urination, it treat breast abscess. And I would like also to mention one thing is that it also promote lactation. Okay. Now we learned Pu Gong Ying, we learned Ba Lan Gen. So I want to say that, you know, uh, give you a note that both herbs can clear damp heat and to treat jaundice. Okay. Both herb can clear damp heat to treat jaundice. Banan gen, uh, sorry, not banan gen. It's, uh, Pu Gong Ying. Okay. So Pu Gong Ying, uh, you have to cautious, uh, using this herb, although it is slightly cold and it is sweet as well, but overdosing it, can cause diarrhea okay um because it's a cool nature cold nature it can cause mild diarrhea this is the last herb we're going to talk about it's called ji hua di ding ji hua di ding is viola okay it's a viola the uh we use the purple viola ji hua is meaning purple flowers we use the purple flowers viola and uh to, as a herb um and uh you know to well uh right now uh because uh purple flower is harder to find and it's actually because it's called Zihua. So with the name uh purple flower. So this herb becoming expensive if you really want to look for the purple flower one. Okay. Traditionally we use the purple flower one, but nowadays we use just Di Ding Tao. So um instead of the purple flower one we use um you know we use just a regular viola. Uh, Zi Hua Pi Di Ding, uh, purple viola. We, it is bitter, acrid, and cold, just like, um, the herb that we mentioned earlier. It entered the liver, heart, and stomach channel. So we also use about 15 to 30 grams, okay? What is it about Zi Hua Di Ding? What is it so special about this herb? We use this herb to treat all kinds of toxic swelling, uh, toxic swelling due to heat okay due to heat problem okay all kind of toxic swelling is really famous for toxin swelling and uh, in particularly we use it for carbuncle farango erysipelas uh, scrofula clove sores and we use it also for um, breast abscess and intestinal abscess and uh, especially for treatment of uh, rooted farango due to uh, excess heat uh, it is like clove sore that we are mentioning uh, we mentioned before clove, clove sore also we can use this special herb to treat snake poisoning snake poisoning so if you use it in a large amount uh, by itself then uh, and also combine with bian and if you combine that, you can actually use it to treat, uh, snake poisoning. Okay. Of course, uh, I would not, if you have snake poisoning, I would suggest that you don't just rely on this herbs. Okay. Uh, we don't know which snakes, um, which type of snake poisoning is particularly effective for. And, um, it's just, uh, you know, I would suggest that, you know, the person should go seek medical, medical, uh, attention. Okay. But, Ji Hua Di Ding is especially good for pharyngonosis, uh, pharyngo carbunco. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. It's really good for that. For contraindication, um, again, because this is a cold herb, we do not want, uh, to give it to people with deficiency cold problem. So that means that the person has yin patterns of, uh, sores, yin sores. That's, uh, that's the end of the slides that conclude the, um, um, this session. You learn seven herbs from the clear heat resolve toxin category. And next we are going to look at, um, uh, clear heat and, uh, dry damp category herbs. Okay.